Good day, Crafty Chums, and welcome to my channel. It's Nikki here, and uh, I'm making this video for hashtag Artsy Second Sunday Hop, and my subject today is uh, Frida Kahlo. And um, I was going to read you a little bit about Frida's life as we go along, and, and I will just do little bits and pieces about it, but um, to be honest with you, she didn't have, it's from the sounds of the reading that I'm doing, she didn't have a very, um, I would call it a, not a very happy life. And um, when she was five years old, um, she contracted polio and then uh, and that withered one of her legs and made one leg shorter. And, um, and then when she was 18, she was involved in a horrific bus crash, which um, obviously left her um, in, disabled with great pain um, that stayed with her for the rest of her life. And then in, 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 towards the end of her life, um, she had one of her legs amputated at the knee. And, and you know, uh, she was married very famously to Rivera Diego, or to, sorry, Diego Rivera. And uh, and theirs was not a happy marriage, as it turned out. And both of them had numerous affairs. And, um, yeah, I would say not too happy a life. They ended up divorcing um, in the end. Um, but I don't think either of them were really very happy about that either. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Frida was actually born Magdalena Carmen Frida Carlo Calderon. I believe that's how you, how you pronounce it, but I may have just slaughtered that, and I do apologise. And she was born on the um, 6th of July, 1907, and she died on the 13th of July, 1954. So, uh, yeah, she was a bit of a uh, activist, a feminist, and, and an activist, and, and bless her. <laughs> bless her, bless her, bless her. Her father was a German-born photographer, and um, she spent the early part of her life uh, colorizing his photographs for him in his studio, I do believe. And so th this is a like a kind of homage to Frida in the fact that I'm using a, um, a Frida photograph and um, I will be colorizing that one as well. And so in that respect, it's a uh, this is. This technique is an homage to her. Um, so what I've done there, I've used some uh, old packaging that I had saved and I'm um, using that as the base for my project today. And I'm using um, book paper, music paper, designer paper, uh, tissues, and uh, just making the background, they're sticking everything down with Mod Podge and sticking her portrait down as well. And um, yeah, and going from there. So I've got, I'm going over with a very faint layer of uh, gesso there. It helps to seal the background and um, sort of like merge it and blend it all in one. Otherwise you just get lots of sticky up edges of the papers that you're putting down and I dry that off. I thought I'd cut out all the drying, but obviously I didn't in the editing, but never mind. You'll see there I'm drying that off. And uh, just gluing um, the back of the photograph there to stick down on the background as well. And so there she is there, beautiful Frida, and just rolling down the back. There, to get it as flat as I can, it's quite good to get a flat surface to start with and um, flattening that down. I'm going it over with some clear gesso. I'm using clear gesso so that I can still see her features because I'm colourising the photograph of her. So I don't want to obliterate it by using a white gesso. I want to be able to still see her features there and I'm just going to be adding colour to it. So I'd also dry that off and cut round the edges just to, um, just to neaten it all up a little bit. And I'm using some Caran uh, water-soluble wax pastels, uh, Neocolor 2s. 
and um, so there I'm using my little water tank brush whatever they're called and <laughs> just um, activating the watercolors there and I will also go over this with some gesso and then I shall dry that off also and um, as you can see uh, what the gesso is doing is, is is that it's actually blending in the watercolour black ground so there's not such a harsh divide between all of the colours and here I go over it again with the watercolour water soluble um, wax crayons pastels I should say <laughs> um, just uh, so I'm doing it darker closer to the body and um, fading out towards the edges of the piece as well uh, doing it darker by the body as well also helps to disguise just that little bit of paper that you've got around the edges um, as otherwise you can see a clear um, definition of where the end of the paper stops and uh, and everything else begins so it's just another way to help to blend it in and disguise that it's actually a, um, a photograph. <laughs> Not that you want to disguise it, you're just going to colourise it. And I'm using um, the wax pastels, um, water soluble pastels to go over the face again. This one is a nice salmon colour, just gives it a really nice fleshy tone to the skin. I'm trying to project my voice a little bit now so excuse me if I sound a little bit hoarse occasionally. I hope you can't hear the computer too much but if you can I do apologise. I would use this speaker but I've just this is my second voiceover I've done because the first one just ended up being too muffled so um, yeah that's no good is it. And here we go. So I'm still, I, I should just um, go along and, and I'll be doing highlights and lowlights and and continuing the coloration that way. As you can see, she's already got some beautiful shadows on her face as well. So I'm just enhancing all of that. Putting in her magnificent eyebrows. Giving her a bit of lip colour, some highlights to her eyes. Just going over and darkening the hair. So say what continuing to enhance the highlights and the lowlights, shadow and light. And I decided to um, not to go with the clothes that she's wearing there. I actually decided to put a different outfit on, on her and this is taken from another photograph of Frida and it's a beautiful scarf that she's got and, and a lovely silky dress so I'm just there doing the scarf and then you'll see the dress coming in a little bit later and because I've gessoed over it um, you still kind of see the polka dots of the uh, dress underneath um, but I'm actually changing it to something else and it does work quite well <laughs> it's another kind of famous photograph of her um, with the scarf and the um, pinky colour dress silk dress I believe it is I'm just going to dry it off and then uh, have a go with my Posca pen and um, the Posca pen didn't work very well on that because it was still just a little bit wet 
and I wasn't giving it enough time to dry. So I went with my Stibolo All pencil, which goes over it really nicely. There, that's the Stibolo All there now. Just go around the scarf. And the Stibolo All, of course, is a, a watercolour as well or is activated by watercolour. Activated by water. I'll get it right in the end, won't I? <laughs> oh, sorry about my squeaky chair, if you can hear that. I do apologise, maybe I'll get some oil on there one day, or WD-40 or something. So, as I say, continue just all the time, uh, highlights and lowlights, shadow and light. using this below all again it really is a lovely pencil <laughs> I use it a lot in um, mixed media eventually I'll get some music and um, you'll instead of have, having me talk all the time you will uh, hear the music instead but not yet I'm not into it yet <laughs> Still trying to figure out how to do the editing process properly on this new um, system I have. So I wasn't sure whether I made a mistake with using the Posca pen. I feel I did, but um, nothing's a mistake. It's just an opportunity to learn. And um, I wouldn't go around her again with a um, Posca pen. I would probably just stick with the Stabilo or just a definer chin area and that. So I want to thank Martha for um, organising this hop. It's really great. I know there's a, a lot involved in it. And all the other ladies who are taking part as well. I want to thank them too. And don't forget to hop along to the next um, video. Um, I'll leave the link for that in the description box below this video and in the live chat in the um, box to my left or right. <laughs> And then I'm just putting a quote on here as well, which you'll see come up in a minute. And um, and yeah, I want to say thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, uh, I would appreciate it if you did subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave me a kind comment after the video is played. That would be lovely. Thank you. Everybody does appreciate that as well. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope to see you all again very soon. That's me saying goodbye. Goodbye.